Y'all, are we ready to talk about grocery budgets this year? I feel like it is a very pertinent topic, a very hot topic right now, um, just because the price of items lately has gone through the roof. And we're going to talk about how to break it down, how to decide what is valuable for you to make at home, what is worthwhile for you to make at home, and what is better to outsource or grab from the store, and how to kind of do that equation in your mind so that you know what is best for you and your family. And you can know that if you're purchasing something from the store, that's what you should be doing. If you are making something, that's what you should be doing. Let's get into it. I am Erin Whalen, a mom of two homeschooling and homesteading in West Tennessee. And I am here today to just kind of share my wisdom, share my journey. Um, although we've only been homesteading for two years now, um, I grew up on the farm and um, my mom can and did all that kind of stuff. And so but then we, I, I got married and at the beginning it was, it's kind of crazy how it's so fun um, when you're first starting out to go from, you know, your mom made everything at home, everything was at home to, I can go eat out, I can buy these things that we never purchased before, I can do all this kind of stuff and then kind of coming full circle again and realizing I don't want to do that, um, home is best, what my mom was doing is best and we're just going to kind of circle back around pull the wagons in and do what I initially was raised doing anyhow. And I, what I think a lot of you guys are trying to do, um, which is commendable and amazing and a journey. It's a journey, right? And so let's just kind of discuss just the beginnings of the journey. I have my notes to the side here since I'm doing this on the podcast platform, but also on YouTube if you want to see me there. Um, I've actually got some things I'm going to be showing you today. So if you need a visual, if you like visuals, YouTube's the place to be, um, but I'll also explain it in detail so that those of you on the podcast will also get an understanding of exactly what I am talking about. But um, when I'm talking about saving money from the store, you definitely could go to the store and get things cheaper if you're going to buy low quality products. So if you're going to buy the crappiest of white bread, if you're going to buy <laughs> the just kind of the the lowest value item and um, when I go to the store I'm sourcing usually organic I'm sourcing um, local if I can I'm sourcing things that are of a higher value because they are made in a way that I I have standards of um, things that we eat from our family every family is different but I just through our health journey I have set these specific standards to where I will not purchase things if they don't meet those standards. And so when I was going to the store, I was definitely spending more money than if I was going to go there and just buy the cheapest of each item. But that's not how we live in our family for our health. And I don't think that's how a lot of you guys live either. You want quality and um, you want value, but usually you can't get both at the store. Sometimes you can, but it's not very often. And so what I have leaned into more is the buying in bulk and different things that we'll get into that we can make things at home. But you have to decide what to make at home because I think a lot of the times what happens when someone's like on their health journey and they're like, I'm going to make everything from scratch from scratch and I'm going to make everything at home. Well, that can get overwhelming very fast and it can be a lot. Now, since I am a stay at home mom, I am a homeschool mom, I am home all the time. And so I can probably make more things at home from scratch than someone who maybe has an outside job. And you know what? If I don't have a, an unlimited amount of time to be in my kitchen, then I have to decide what is best that I should make at home and what I should I need to source from the store. And so you kind of have to do that equation of your time is valuable. If you have less time, then maybe focus on, okay, my family eats a ton of bread. And I know that that's something that we consume on a daily basis. So what I'm going to do is on Sundays, I'm going to set amount of time aside and I'm going to make four loaves of bread. I'm going to put one in the bread box and put one in the fridge. I'm going to put two in the freezer. So we rotate through that. And I know that they have that great bread. If I know that um, my family likes snacks, they like yogurt. Well, I know that the store yogurts are over a dollar a piece, over a dollar a piece per individual one. Then, um, and that's just too expensive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a gallon of milk and I'm going to make that at home and I'm going to stock up on yogurts that can feed all my kids the whole week long. Yogurt is a simple, simple process. It's very easy to make. You can flavor it how you want. So you have a lot of control over the taste and everything else. And so I'm going to put that in my fridge knowing that it's way more cost effective for me to make that at home versus something else. Now, can you make everything at home? Again, you have to evaluate how much time it takes to make it, how much your family consumes it to see if that's something that's worthwhile for you to do at home. 
for me, I lean into most things I can make at home. Um, and if I can't, is it something we really need to consume? Like, yes, there's specialty items. If we have a special dish that I don't make a ton, then maybe for me, it's just easier to go buy those specific ingredients from the store. But if it's something that I'm consistently making, that I'm consistently showing up and is on our menu weekly, then it probably is going to be worth it for me to make it at home um, because it's something that we consume a lot of. Um, prioritizing based on individual lifestyle and priorities. So that's kind of what we discussed there. Just decide, sit down. What does your family eat the most? What is most efficient for you to make for your time? And go from there. And as you get really good at one thing, like really good at making bread or really good at making that yogurt, maybe it doesn't take as much mental space in your brain. And so you can now add something else. Maybe you want to move to sourdough instead of a yeast bread. Maybe you want to go, hey, can I find local raw dairy milk and make sour cream? You know, like you get to decide on your journey what you want to add next. And so just layer your knowledge, I think is the best thing is do a few things. Don't feel so, I think so many of us, once we're exposed to maybe some of the things that are in our food, we're, we just go, okay, let's get rid of all of it. But instead of that, where you get so much overwhelm and then you get stressed, which also wasn't great for you, why don't we just, again, try to incorporate a few things at a time, get really good at those few things, and then layer and layer and layer over that until, honestly, when you layer things and you look back a year, You'll be surprised at the amount of things you change in that time and you don't feel stressed about it. You feel very confident in what you've mastered and what you've achieved in your journey because you have slowly added on as you felt confident in certain areas. Um, I, I use bread as an example because buying wheat is way less expensive than purchasing bread items from the store. You have to eat hamburger buns, tortillas, loaves of bread. Um, hot dog buns, English muffins, like all those things, honestly, do not take very much time at home to make it all. You can, again, spend a Sunday afternoon making some bread. Or if you want to do it, you can always just like one Sunday a month or one Sunday out of every two and just make so much bread that you can freeze. Free The freezer is your best friend. You can make so many bread items, freeze them later, then let them thaw out, reheat in the oven if you want things warm. There's just so many ways that you can do it once and then just take from that over and over again. One of the great things for someone who wants to be budget friendly is to eventually invest in a secondary freezer. So like a chest freezer outside or an upright freezer, we have a freezer out in our shop and that's just a really great way to, if you find something on sale, buy it in bulk. I freeze cheese, I freeze my yeast, I freeze my butter, obviously our meat, um, our bread, the freezer can hold so much and do so much for you. Just make sure to date things and use freezer appropriate containers so that you don't get frostbite and ruin all of your hard work uh, purchases, purchasing these things that you eventually have to feed to the chickens or something else because you didn't rotate through it correctly. So that is definitely something to be um, thoughtful about. But investing in a freezer, and you can find them on Facebook Marketplace, you can find them on Craigslist. There's so many different ways. A lot of people, when they're moving, they're just trying, they can't take that kind of stuff and it doesn't travel long distance as well. And so they're trying to off those. And so those are something that you can definitely look at. Um, also something to think about, I know it's not really food related, but paper products. I know all, like we go through a lot of paper towels. <laughs> We've gone through a lot of paper towels in our house and gosh dang, if paper towels have not also gone up in price and they're so expensive, especially because you don't want to buy the paper thin ones that are falling apart with one use. And so I, instead, we still have paper towels. I'm trying to use them less. What I've been doing instead is I just bought a bulk bag of the Costco wash rigs and you can get them on Amazon. They're just this big old pack of wash rigs and I just use them and toss and use and toss. So yes, you might have to do an extra load of laundry a week for all these white rigs that you're using all over the house, but they're great for dusting. They're great for um, in the kitchen when you're cleaning up messes or spills or anything like that, anything that you would use a paper towel for, most likely you're going to be able to um, use a wash rag for. And honestly, it's just retraining yourself and retraining your family to grab for the wash rag versus the paper towel. Set them beside each other for a while so people have like the option of, should I grab this or should I really grab the wash rag because I don't need to dispose of this item. Um, and so it's constantly living in a way to where when you think about this, the first week, everything you do in the kitchen, evaluate how you're doing it or if it's something that needs to be done or if you can possibly change out this task. Um, we use a specific kind of cleaner in our house. What it, 
Uh, it's called Force of Nature. And I talked about it before on here. I've shared it before. I have a link for actually a discounted price for your first time purchase, but it's like a multi-purpose cleaner. It does everything. It does windows, it does floors, it cleans as well as bleach, but it doesn't actually bleach things. You can spray it on furniture, you can spray it on rugs. It's a really great degreaser. And so we use that one thing, which is so much cheaper than those Clorox sprays, which are like six or $7 a bottle. Plus it's so much healthier for your respiratory system not to be breathing in all those harmful chemicals. And so it doesn't even have to do like grocery bill, I count for the things like the cleaners, the paper products, all the stuff that you're constantly going to the store for over and over, not just consuming. Um, and so those things you can cut out significantly well. And honestly, if you cut down on all the cleaners that are out there, that whole cleaning aisle and just went to one product, imagine the change in price that is going to be for your family. That's a huge, significant change. We use microfiber cloths here. We love those as well. So cut out all the cleaners like that. Use force of nature, cut out paper towels, use wash rags. And right there, I bet you're saving hundreds of dollars a month, um, which is huge. In, in a, the average household, that means a lot to people, um, especially, and then cut out the most of the bread products, do your own flour. You know, breads are very basic. Most breads don't even require milk. It's usually just salt, flour, water, an oil, and very other limited ingredients. And so I bulk buy my um, olive oil or avocado oil. I do not use seed oils. So avocado oil or um, olive oil, I will use from Costco. I'll buy the, the bulk of those. I use those to make my mayonnaise. I make mayonnaise from home. You know, mayonnaise has also been going up and there's just so much gunk in the mayonnaise that I don't approve of and I don't want in my home. And it takes me 30 seconds to whip together mayonnaise. I'll link the recipe below. Um, and I've been making it for three years now. It is so easy. It's one of those things where on Sundays I make bread, I change out my sourdough starter, I change out my kefir, I make my mayonnaise. <laughs> we just kind of get ready for the week. And it's one of those things that I just do it on repeat to where I don't even have to think about it. I put in a podcast, I put on some music, and sometimes I'll pour myself a little glass of wine and I'll just play in the kitchen. And the, and the family knows like Sundays after you come home from church, I'm sorry if my cat's crying, he sees birds through the window and um, he's trying to get those. But um, the kids know on Sundays, they clean room, we clean house after church, I work in the kitchen, and then we settle down and have a nice evening. And Travis and I usually have some sort of show that we're catching up on. Um, in the summer times, we walk the yard, we do, we do yard walks every day, and that's really fun. We haven't been able to do them in the winter time as much because it's just kind of miserable out there. But spring is coming and we're getting those, um, but I'm getting off track here. Um, let me talk about meat. So meat is one of those things to where I, <laughs> Meat is so hard to know because of the labeling where exactly it's coming from when it's at the store. Um, and so it's just, it's a sketchy area and meat is so important because there, I mean, there's a lot of meat that's sourced overseas, but they just manipulate the packaging to where I just, I don't feel really comfortable purchasing a lot of meat from the store. Now I have before in the past, like years and years, um, always check the there's always like a clearance section or an expiration section where the meat's going to go bad um, in the next few days and that's usually in the mornings you can get there and you can look at those and they do have organic options and things like that and if you're from if you can go to like to kroger or fred meyer or something you can ask the meat person who works there like where did you source this meat from and they should be able to tell you that but if you see something there grab it throw it in the freezer again freeze that meat when we we did pigs this last year so we did two pigs um, we gave some to my parents. We have a lot of pig in our freezer. Um, and so I make most of my dishes with pork. I'm, I just type into Pinterest, like pork dishes for dinner. And so I look through and see what we can do with pork. We want to expand this year. and We want to do um, ch chickens as well. And then hopefully the year after that, we'll incorporate some beef. But I might just buy a half a beef from a local farmer here that has that available for us. And so I like doing beef or I like doing meat locally just in general. If, if I can avoid the store, and honestly, we've looked at prices and the prices are very similar to the store, but you know where the meat's coming from. You could go see the meat in the pasture if you wanted to before it was butchered. You know that it was fed well, you know that it was manageable, that it was cared for well, and then it's a quality um, item that you're purchasing that lived a good life. And so um, that is very important to me. So if you have to buy meat from the store, you do. You have to, but... Bulk buy what you can, when you can, stock it up, save, transfer it to other bags if you're going to freeze it and freeze it in those. Don't ever freeze it in the packaging that it comes in because that um, 
that freezer burns very, very quickly. Um, let's keep going here. Rice and beans and potatoes. There is nothing wrong with rice and beans and potatoes. The prices on those are extremely good. And a lot of times they have sales on different things like that. I buy my rice in bulk from Costco. Um, I buy my potatoes from Costco. You can buy dried beans. I usually say, if you can, try not to do canned items from the store, but dried items like the dried beans. Don't buy the beans in the cans. They're so much more expensive in the cans versus dried. And dried, again, it's just kind of like a change in your mindset. If you're gonna use those beans that evening, then put them in water in the morning to soak so that you're ready and they are ready in the evening when it goes to cook them. So a lot of the time it's planning ahead, but by planning ahead and taking the route that maybe is not easy as just opening with the can opener, but literally setting it out in the morning in some water, you could again be saving a significant amount of money that adds up over the end of the year. Um, so every, and potatoes as well. Potatoes can be utilized in so many different ways in the kitchen. They are such a good price, usually at most stores. You can also, I'm gonna try for the first time this year, I think to grow my own potatoes, which I have never done before because um, I always was in the city um, in my two previous houses. So I grew up on a farm, but my parents, they mostly did like salsa and things like that. So they didn't do a bunch of potatoes and such. They were more like canning the tomatoes, a lot of different kinds of varieties of peppers. Um, and so I wanted to try potatoes this year and see how well that does with the bugs and stuff in West Tennessee. <laughs> if you garden potatoes in West Tennessee, send me your, your help, um, your tips and everything for how to keep the bugs out. We do organic gardening here. Um, and so we'll see how that goes. But potatoes are another really great resource to lean into the items that, I mean, if you get a great meat and you add it with potatoes, rice, or beans, and you get it like a can like a vegetable we have i canned my own green beans so i can obviously a lot of my stuff and um that is a great hearty healthy protein just rich dinner that your family is going to really really fill up on and so um don't don't snub your nose at rice and beans and potatoes um and then think strategically while shopping so if you go to pick up tortillas go you know what let me see can i make these at home tortillas they don't seem like there's that much well there shouldn't be that many ingredients in there 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 is at the store but again it's like a five ingredients at home and make them ahead of time freeze them and then cook them um and so anytime like even like the yogurt or anything at the store like could i do this at home or is it not worth my time at home there are some things that take a long time and so it's just not worth it or again you don't consume it enough to to make the making it yourself worth it um and so, so just outsource that to the store. That's totally fine. Um, one of the things that I know a lot of people spend money on is drinks. <laughs> you see the reels and stuff on um, Pinterest or the reels on Instagram, but the pictures of on Pinterest of people's drink fridges. So they're the fridges that's, that just hold people's um, beverages like Alani's or like poppy drinks, or there's just so many different kinds of drinks that are out there. And I get it. I am like a liquid person. If I didn't have to eat and I could just drink amazing drinks all day long, I'm probably one of those crazy people that would be like, sign me up. I would love to sip on something all day long. Give me a carbonated beverage. We don't drink pop or anything in this house. Very rarely. We'll do it if the kids, like if we go out or if my parents buy the kids something, but we don't keep soda or anything at home. Um, I was purchasing like the poppy drinks, which has like the apple cider vinegar. It's more like a probiotic um, fizzy drink. And then there's another one that's similar to poppy, but the name is escaping me right now. Um, but those are again so expensive you guys we got a deal at costco where they were on sale but even that i bought one set and we went through it so quick because the kids are excited about it and i was just like this is not a good use of my money how can we do this at home and so um about a year ago now i started making milk kefir and so milk kefir is such a great way i did a whole blog post on it um i have it in my amazon store i'll link to everything below but it's a really probiotic high protein rich drink and so you you do the kefir grains in milk and the kefir, uh, it eats the lactose and stuff in the milk. And then it turns it into almost like a kind of a runny yogurt, but you can use it in dressings, in dips, in smoothies, in recipes that require milk or water. You can substitute with kefir. It's just such a really great option. And so we make kefir, kefir popsicles in the summertime. And in the wintertime, we usually do smoothies for like an afternoon snack or even a lunch or a breakfast. And it's a really, really great option that just is very filling for the kids and for me. It keeps us over a long time full, but it's so, so good for you. And you can utilize it in so many different ways that you can make it one of those fun drinks. 
And so we really enjoy Milk Keeper on our house. And then I made the yogurt, which we have as snacks. And then another thing that I'm just going to actually just got it today and I'm really excited is in place of like the carbonated beverages, like the poppy drinks and such like that, um, is Water Keeper. And so I got these Water Keeper grains and they came from a small business in Florida. So this is what they look like here. They're, they're similar. So Milk Keeper grains kind of look like cauliflower um, pieces. The Water Keeper grains are more of a tannish yellow orangish color. Um, and they're, they're granular. They almost look like the rocks at the bottom of a like fish tank, like this fish tank. <laughs> That's kind of what it looks like to me, but I can even through the packaging smell the, the fermented, like the, the ferment smell that they have. And so you do a two, um, a two ferment, pro that cat, you guys, I'm so sorry. Um, a two ferment process with this, you ferment it once in a sugar water, it actually eats the sugar. And so that's what helps ferment the water. So you don't get the sugar out of it. It's actually extremely healthy. And then you put it through a second ferment to carbonate it. If you choose, you don't actually have to do that. You don't have to put it through the second ferment to carbon to carbonate it, but you can do that. And I do have bottles. Um, I should have brought one over here, but I didn't, um, the bottles to carbonate it, it needs to be sealed, placed in a window. You put some sort of like fruit juice with it, a little bit of grape juice or strawberry juice or whatever you want. And you make this carbonated beverage that is supposed to be really, really good. So I'm excited for this. And if this works, it's literally pennies for the cup to make these and so much, so much cheaper and just kind of fun, you know, like not only is this really good to eat, but the kids, we like to be able to play and, and have fun and enjoy our food and enjoy our drinks and have special occasions. And so this is one of those. Also, um, hot cocoa. My kids are just like crazy about hot cocoa. And so what we do is my recipe is very simple. Um, I do a cup of cocoa powder to a cup of organic sugar and I mix those together. I throw in some chocolate chips in that as well. And the kids just scoop it out and they add their water to it. Evelyn, you should add a little bit of milk. If you want to get really bougie about it, you can put some vanilla bean in there and um, stir it all up. And we really enjoy that for hot cocoa. The kids just use the Keurig to pull hot water in the evenings for their cocoa, but you could do a big old thing of it on the stove top if you wanted to. And so that's a fun way to incorporate all these things so that you're your family doesn't feel deprived because we do live in a society where a lot of people, that's not their priority, right? And you see, you know, your kids are hanging around other people who are drinking pop and doing all these things that maybe you don't want to do for health or for to save money. And so you want, these are ways that you can be like, look, you know, we still get fun stuff. We can still do cool stuff and it doesn't feel deprived, but you're actually doing your family a service as far as cost savings and the health of it as well. Um, and being able to enjoy and have kind of a bonding moment of making these things with your family. And that's really, really fun. I am interrupting the podcast episode real quick to share something I'm so excited about with you. Speaking of, you know, healthy, cleaning, all that kind of stuff, but we put it on our skin matters as well. And I'm so excited to be able to share something with you and then to give you a coupon code if you would like to try it out for yourself. So recently I've been on a journey to get better products for my skin. I love makeup. I think it's a joy to be able to put it on. I have always liked it. I became a Mary Kay consultant. I think back when I was 14, I think my mom had to actually sign up for me because, um, because I wasn't old enough to do it myself, but I have loved makeup since forever. <laughs> and so, but I've been trying really hard to get better source, better quality ingredients that are better for me, better for my skin and all that. And so I have hair on me. So today I want to share, I went um, on Amazon and I was trying to order a new bronzer because I was running out and I wanted to try something different. And so I found Jack's Organic. Now Jack's Organic is so cool because their packaging is all paper. So you could literally burn this. There's nothing that has to go in the garbage afterwards, which is really nice. There is a little plastic piece here, but it's mostly paper. And what this is, is I was never sure if I wanted to do creams, um, but the cream is so amazing. So I put on my foundation and then I put the cream in the spots that I like it and I blend it all together. It works so good. And I love how the blush, so they have three different colors here. These colors are all absolutely gorgeous. I love them so much. And so I will take this and you can use it on your lips for chapstick or I use this also as blush. And so I put it along here. I kind of put it over my nose and on the other side to just kind of give me this full glow there. And um, they are so fun to mess with. And some of them have like the Beyond Reef Safe. This almost has like a little shimmer to it, which I really, really like. And so these are really great. And they were so kind 
to send me some other other products to try. So they have a mineral SPF 45 and it's got zinc oxide in it. So very basic. Some of the, <laughs> we don't use a ton of sunscreen in our family. We slow roll in the sun. So the minute it starts getting sunny out, we go outside and we just kind of slowly acclimate ourselves. But if we're out in the sun for a significant amount of time in the middle of the day or by water or anything like that, we will pull out some SPF. And this is so nice because it's just very basic. You throw it on by just a little bar and it's it stays on really well too in the water. It's kind of got a little a little sticking power to it. And so that's really nice. I'm excited to use that. And then they also gave me um they're another one but in a cream form and then this is really fun to a recovery salve for muscle joint and arthritis which my husband he's been beating himself up over here so i can't wait for him to try that and then i absolutely love this brightening vitamin c night cream it smells divine it's so creamy and nice i love the consistency of it it's very smooth it goes on really well um I love the whole thing. So if you would like to go to the website, I'll link it below. The code for 20% off of everything that you purchase there is Erin20. So that's all lowercase E-R-Y-N 20 to give a try of all their products. And I bet that you will love them. So the other thing that I would say is just invest in tools to make being in the kitchen easier. So a KitchenAid. I had a small KitchenAid at one point in time, I guess a regular size KitchenAid, but for the amount of bread and such that I was making all the time, it, that KitchenAid was not, I was burning up the engine. And so I went to the secondary KitchenAid that hooks in on the sides and they had a really great deal at Costco um, a few years ago and I bought that and that was a game changer in my kitchen because before with this smaller KitchenAid, I would have to take the bread out before it was even done and knead it by hand. And the whole point of having a KitchenAid is to not have to do that kind of stuff. And I would be not be able to make as big batches of things because it would start flinging out the KitchenAid and it wouldn't hold it well. Um, and so buying products that help you in the kitchen, um, the vegetable cutters that you put the vegetable in it and like slam it down, that's really good too. Um, and also, uh, what was I gonna say? Um, the vegetable shredders, the things that you know go around and around and shred your vegetables and stuff. Um, you can also make smoothies, smoothies with them. Um, and then obviously blenders and things like that. Like what could help lift some of the burden so that you can be more efficient in the kitchen and get in and out there faster? Because I love being in the kitchen. I love playing in the kitchen, but I know not everyone does. And even though I do love being in the kitchen, I want to be efficient because there's other things I also want to do um, throughout the day too, besides just being in the kitchen all day long. And so buying products that help you um, is really, really important. And obviously like a lot of these things, even like buying the half a pig or whatever, that's a huge investment up front. And so th these are things that sometimes you have to save for for a little while and then buy this thing and then save for and then buy the next thing. But slowly by doing that and accumulating all these things that are better for you or that are, help you be more efficient and help your making things from scratch journey easier, you're going to save yourself time, save yourself money, make your family healthier foods, and it's all around just going to be a better experience uh, for everyone in your family. So I hope that was helpful to you today. Um, I think that was about it. And yeah, you guys tune in next week. I actually have some guests coming up that I'm so excited about that are going to share some other homesteading pers perspectives. We might have someone coming on here talking about a dairy cows pretty soon. I know if you guys follow me on Instagram stories, I am in this like the, the hot search for dairy cow right now to add to our farm. We've been here for almost two years now. And I cannot believe I, I still don't have a cow after two years. Like we had obviously lots of things to work through with our house and stuff that we didn't foresee taking as long or taking as much money. And so that's life. We just work through it. But I'm excited for the things to come, the things I get to share with you guys on here today. If you enjoy this episode, please give it five stars. Please send it to someone else. Doing things like tightening your budget or changing things in your house is so much easier when you have a buddy or a friend or someone else that is on board. So if you have someone that's been complaining about grocery budgets or complaining about anything in the kitchen, send them this episode get pumped up together and then um, kind of be each other's buddy as you try to implement and change things to make your kitchen, kitchen run more efficient, be healthier and save money. Until next time, friends.